we've had a lot of issues with speakers over the years. Um, we got involved in designing them and still having somebody else manufacturing them. But about, I think it's got to be almost 10 years ago now, uh, we put in our own speaker assembly line uh, so that we could control the quality. Our speakers have to handle a lot of power compared to uh, some of our other competitors' products because our products really put out a lot of punch. So the voice coils have to be uh, really rugged, the speaker frames have to be really solid, and the whole assembly process has to be carefully controlled because we keep tight tolerances so that we get a very efficient speaker. In a mass production line, uh, tolerances have to be looser, and uh, as a result, a, man a mass manufactured speaker isn't going to have the efficiency or the smoothest of response that uh, you get out of a GK speaker. So, the first part of the process is magnet assembly. Now, we make two kinds of speakers. We make ceramic speakers, which is the older kind of speaker, and it has a certain sound, and we still make them for that reason. They're also a lot less expensive. And we make neodymium speakers, and uh, those have a different kind of a sound from a ceramic speaker, uh, but they're extremely light. Both uh, versions can handle a lot of power. We're able to get more power out of our neodymium speakers because we have a heat sink molded in into the magnetic assembly that gets the heat out of the coil. And one of the important parts of assembling a magnetic assembly is applying the glue properly. These speakers are basically glued together. <laughs> it's odd to think about it that way, but if the glue is applied properly, it holds forever and you have to use the proper kind of glues. We source all of our adhesives in the U.S. Uh, and we use robots to apply the adhesive so that it is exactly where it's supposed to be and in exactly the right kind of quantities. As the and once the magnet assemblies are put together, then we put them in a press, uh, which is just, on, just behind uh, the robot, and that holds them uh, you know, really under a lot of pressure for just a few seconds, and uh, the adhesives cure and, you know, they're uh, impervious. So that's the magnet assembly. Then once the speakers are, the magnets are assembled, they go on a conveyor and they go down to the next station. The next station is where the voice coil and the spider and the cone get assembled into the frame. Once again, we use a robot and a special adhesive that we source in the U.S. And um, the robot applies the adhesive and, a, and a, uh, an assembler uh, positions the voice coil uh, exactly where it needs to be in the spider and it puts the whole uh, assembly you know, in, into the magnet assembly. Then goes the cone and it all gets, uh, uh, the cone gets uh, glued to the uh, to the voice coil with a special adhesive that we once again source in the U.S., which cures in seconds. Um, once that process is done, it goes on the conveyor to go down to the next station, which is where the wiring happens. So there's wires coming out of the voice coil that have to be attached to what's called the whisker wire that goes from the voice coil to the terminals, so you can get power into the voice coil. That whisker wire uh, we have specially engineered and manufactured in Taiwan. Uh, it's very expensive wire. It never breaks, which is why we had it engineered for our exact purposes. The voice coil wire itself in most of our speakers is what's called edge wound uh, aluminum wire. And we can go into that on a, in another discussion, but that type of uh, voice coil uh, winding uh, gives you a lot of power dissipation, lots of very high efficiency, good smooth frequency response through the range. The only problem with uh, edge wound voice coils is they're oh maybe 10 to 20 times more expensive than a round wire voice coil because they have to be wound by hand. They can't be put on an automated wire wound wire winder coil winder. So anyway, when that's done, they go back, the speakers go back on the conveyor, and that's all hand, hand work. Uh, and they go down to the, to the uh, uh, dust cap assembly station. Once again, there's a robot there 
Sometimes we do it by hand or sometimes we do it with a robot. It depends on the speaker. But that dust cap has to be uh, glued into position precisely so that it's in the center of the uh, cone. That's a pretty quick process. And that is the only gluing process that has to cure overnight. All of our other adhesives cure in a matter of minutes, if not seconds in some cases. Uh, so when we start building speakers in the morning, they end up at that uh, uh, dust cap assembly station in the afternoon. And then the next morning, they're ready to test and magnetize. So that's the final station. And that station uh, has a pretty big magnetizer. I don't know if the equipment shows in the video or not. But the magnets aren't magnetized until the very end. That keeps the metal filings and debris from getting into the voice coil. So the last thing we do is magnetize them. Magnetizing takes, oh, once you, you have to clamp the device, the speaker, you know, in a fixture, but uh, once you get it clamped in, it magnetizes itself in a tenth of a second. Uh, once it's magnetized, it comes out of the fixture, and we test them right there with one of our big amplifiers. And uh, the uh, tester really can hear every little thing that could be wrong. And I would say um, one out of 100 speakers that we as assemble doesn't pass that process, and they have to be torn apart and reconed. So um, that's the end. Of, and once the speakers are done, they get on a pallet, and they go right next door to where we do the cabinet assembly.